Hello, this is Belisi and Lenny doing a quick rundown of the vocabulary in, um, in Unit 18. The first verb is the verb to die in Greek, um, a, an interesting word. There's only one cognate of it, in, uh, a possible cognate of it. It's a Sanskrit word that means disappear, so probably was a euphemism, okay? Um, the, the tricky part about apothenesco is its principal part, so the future is apothanumai, and then you have a second aorist, a pethanon, um, and then a perfect tethneka. The vocabulary notes in the, uh, for this lesson give you also some other forms of it, because it, and there are some parts of it in which um, it's uh, uh, got athematic forms that are retained. It's a really common word, so some, sometimes it has uh, an athematic form. So, Tethneka, for example, is weird that the perfect doesn't have the apa. Okay, mm -hmm. um, the plural of tethneka is tethnasi, um, which is a mathematic third-person plural form. Uh, other weird things in these forms, but I think it's an unmistakable word, and you'll be able to guess from the reduplication what's going on. I don't think there are any examples of it being too bad. So sorry we got dark there. Um, the next word is corresponding to apasmesco, not the verb to die, but the verb to kill. It's apokteno, which has a contract future apokteno. Again, that's an epsilon contract. Apektena, so there's the, this is one of these verbs whose stem ends with R, L, M, or N, and when you add an S to it, what happens is the S disappears, as you do in the S aorist, and then you lengthen the vowel. So apoktensa became apoktena, apektena rather, and apektona, that's your perfect with the O grade of the vowel. So there are no uh, aorist passive forms of, um, or perfect middle forms of, of the verb to kill. Uh, I teach you the particle ao, uh, alpha upsilon, with a circumflex, which means again or in turn. It's a, it's a common particle in Greek. Um, you know, it's a comes second in the sentence, post-positive particle, and uh, is a, gives, gives a, something about the logic or co logical connection of the sentence that it's beginning to the next one, to the previous one, rather. Then they give us the verb buleo, which looks like the, the verb bulamai, and indeed it's derived from the same noun, bule, which means counsel or plan, um, and it means to plan or counsel, bulamai, means to want or wish, okay? Um, so bulamai is middle only, buleo is active, and can be middle and passive, okay? So it means to plan, to deliberate on. It's really common in the middle too, buleo mai, to mean to take counsel, to make a plan with other people, okay? Mm -hmm. To join in planning something with somebody else. So there, it's an eo verb, like paideo, there's nothing tricky about its principal parts. Um, and they've given you two uh, pompons of buleo, epi buleo and sum buleo. That's pretty common, sum buleo. It means to counsel, uh, to, to advise with somebody with somebody, or in the middle to take counsel or to consult with people. Mm -hmm. Greeks are big on consultative government. At least Athenians are. Okay. Um, they, for some reason, put the indirect interrogative a in the vocabulary. This is the word that you know as if, not for some reason, but for good reason. That is, you can ask, you can use it to ask a question. He's asking if you went to school today. Mm -hmm. um, we, we use if in that way. It introduces a question. It can also be translated with the word whether. Whether. Okay. Right, to pronounce mm -hmm. that properly. He's asking whether you go. And so there are you can also use it in correlative ways. You can have eta, eta, um, whether, or, okay, um, two indirect interrogatives. Now there's the verb zeteo, um, beginning, a verb beginning with a zeta, okay, so we've got zeteo, it's a con epsilon contract verb, zeteso, et zetesa. Um, what happens when you want to reduplicate a uh, in the, for the perfect a verb beginning of the zeta, well, you don't reduplicate, you augment. So, ed zeteka is an um, reduplicated form. That, per, that a is going to stay there. It's not going to go away in the other forms of the perfect, right? Because it's a reduplication. Um, and uh, the, there's no perfect middle, but there's a, 
and they were expressive of zeotethane. There's your augment. That epsilon is an augment, not a reduplication substitute. So zetet was a verb that means to seek or to search. Mentally, it's a word for mental effort to find something out. Mm -hmm. Big word for Socrates, zetet. Zetesis and Zetema and a bunch of derivatives of it. The next word is the verb Hieme, which two thirds of this lesson is about. I think we covered it. They teach you two compounds of it Apieme, which means to let go of something, send it forth, or neglect something. And then this one I didn't mention, Sundieme, which means to understand something, uh, to put things together, right? Is the idea. So the Greek word for intelligence is derived from this verb, sunesis. That's Aristotle's word for human intelligence. The ability to understand or comprehend by, by making connections. Next verb is a weird one, mello, two lambdas, meleso and melesa, which has a strange meaning. In English, we think of this as, the, as a function of a verb. It's, and here it's a uh, of any verb, but here it's a verb in itself, to be about to do something. So it's it's a verb that um, takes an infinitive in the future because it talks about something that's about to happen. Um, so in the meaning has has one meaning, I am about to, and then it's a future infinitive. And then when it doesn't have an infinitive, it can mean delay. This is strange, okay? I, I, I delay you from doing something, okay? Mm -hmm. um, much more common is the sense of this verb uh, to be about to, and it's a way of doing a future for any verb, right? Yeah. A roundabout future. Um, we get another use stem adjective in the group with hedus and barus, and uh, we had another one too, erus, I think. The, wor the words, these are use stem adjectives with, uh, so this one is oxus, oxea oxu, which means piercing or sharp or acute is another way of translating it. And the vocabulary notes here point out something important or helpful. That is, it means an object that's piercing or sharp or a person mm -hmm. who's, who's uh, keen and intelligent. But it's the opposite of barus, okay? Barus is heavy or deep. And oxus is high and piercing. So it's oxus is the word for acute as an accent, and barus is the word for grave. Yeah. Okay. Pisteo, uh, another ero verb like paideo, not difficult principal parts. Okay, that means to trust and takes a dative, an object and a dative. So if you trust someone, that someone goes in the dative case, not in the accusative. Um, two more words. There's the ver noun trapeza. Genitive trapeze, so it's a thalata type noun, feminine noun of this first declension, and it means two things a table and a money changer's table or a bank. Um, the, the, um, this is the, the combination of things is maybe seems weird but to us, but uh, bank, the word bank comes from the Norman French word bon, B A N C, which means a bench. So these are those are the places at which people change money and then they turn into self-standing buildings called banks. All right, no longer benches. Pseudos, last word, is the word for falsehood or lie. Notice it's pseudos, not a second declension, not nominate masculine noun, but a third declension neuter noun like genos or techos, genitive pseudus and gender neuter. Um, and then you also get, this is the opposite of truth, okay, is pseudos, is, aletheia is truth, pseudos is falsehood. And then there is the opposite of the adjective aletheis, which is pseudes, another stem adjective, pseudes, pseudes, which means false or lying. Remember these two termination adjectives, one is masculine and feminine, pseudes, and the other is neuter, pseudes. Um, in this lesson on pages 530 and 531, there's a list of all the interrogatives, uh, the indefinites that go with them, and the demonstratives, as well as the exclamatory relatives that go with them. Uh, it's a good list of, of vocabulary words. I don't think there's anything much to add to them, but it's a good overview 
of a morphological process, you can see the consistencies between them. So that's pages 530 and 531. Yep. Worth, worth looking up.